Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the next in Sun Nuclear's webinar series, Building a Complete QA Program and Improving Patient Care by William Ruck. Before we get started, we do have a couple of logistics uh, to cover. Today's presentation is being recorded, so that recording will be sent to all registrants and also be, a made, be made available on sunnuclear.com. All attendees are currently muted, and we encourage the use of computer audio. If you do have any questions during the presentation, please enter those questions into the questions or the chat window of the GoToWebinar application. We will allow some time for Q&A at the end of today's webinar. And if there are any follow-up questions we're unable to get to in the time that we have available, we will follow up with you directly. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and uh, for today's webinar, Bill Ruck will describe how the medical physics department at Dayton VA Medical Center commissioned their QA database in order to streamline and automate daily, monthly, and annual machine QA. In addition, they used SunCheck Patient, which enabled them, their team to automate their patient QA, including in vivo dosimetry. So today's presentation is given by a chief medical physicist, Bill Ruck, who's been a part of the Dayton VA Medical Center for just about eight years. I'd like you to join me in welcoming Bill in his presentation today. Bill, I'll go ahead and hand the controls over to you. All right, well, good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this uh, presentation. This is a follow-up to a, a live presentation I made in Cincinnati to an audience of about six. So it's uh, great to have more people in the audience, and I want to uh, thank you for taking time. Um, the Dayton VA Medical Center, strangely enough, is in Dayton, Ohio, which maybe may, people don't know where that is, but there's a picture of our main tower. I'm the chief physicist, and I'm ably assisted by Todd Massey, uh, as the other therapy physicist here. Now, we have no financial stake uh, in Sun Nuclear uh, Corporation. We were an early adopter of the, the SunCheck uh, platform. And to be truthful, it was a hugely challenging process for a variety of reasons. One, it was a new product, and two, we're in the VA, and there are many challenges with our network security. Uh, we got a lot of help from the, the Sun technical and clinical staff, and, and we wouldn't have made it this far without their ABLE assistance. Um, we, in turn, have been afforded the opportunity to provide lots of suggestions, and we're really happy to have seen some of those things show up in the product as it has evolved. And uh, we, we look forward to the platform getting ever stronger as time goes on. Now, so a little bit about the presentation today, I want to tell you a little bit about the Dayton VA Medical Center and the, just give you an idea of what we have and why this was important to us. And the talk is basically broken into two parts, one focusing on our use of SNC machine for our comprehensive QA program, meeting AAPM test group 142 and 66 and the whole nine yards, but also our use of SNC patient uh, as our primary means of performing pretreatment QA as well as uh, transit dosimetry using the perfection. So that's kind of where we're heading in the talk. Our facility, we are the smallest of the VAs. We have one linear accelerator vault. We're external beam only, doing beam at IMRT, 3D CRT, and electrons. Uh, the VA has a, a pretty stringent process for getting qualified to do SBRT, and we're, we're engaging in that uh, process to get approval. Uh, we serve military veterans and other eligible beneficiaries in the Dayton kind of Western Ohio region. And our staffing is pretty reasonable. Unfortunately, we have just one radiation oncologist, so that's kind of our rate limiting step. Uh, in terms of physicists, there's one and a half FTEs. I also spend part of my time as the radiation safety officer. We have one CMD, chief therapist, and three full-time therapists. It would be interesting perhaps to note that the VA advertises for all these positions at the usajobs.gov site. So if you're looking for an opportunity, there's a place to go look. So the radiation oncology program, we have a tremendous amount of oversight uh, as part of the, the VA. The National Radiation Oncology Program Office is headed by Dr. Jatender Polta. He oversees about 40 radiation oncology facilities within the VA. Um, historically, we've been all facilities are required to be accredited by the ACR. Uh, we just found out uh, from FY22 and on, we're switching to the Astro Apex 
accreditation process. And so over the next three years, all the facilities will undergo that accreditation uh, process. In addition, we do IROC Houston remote and on-site visits. Are expected to do IROC Houston Phantoms, participate in the mail dosimetry program. We also have National Health Physics Program Office audits under Dr. Ed Leithold. And then finally, we're Joint Commission accredited. So we have a lot of people looking at our program and they want to see good QA records, obviously. That's uh, in terms of our, our, our capability, we have a very true beam 2.7 that was commissioned last year. As you can see, we couldn't pick uh, what energy we wanted, so we got them all. Uh, in addition, you know, onboard imaging, the six degree freedom couch, QFIX, KVU one couch top, the whole nine yards. We have a variant identify system, which we're getting ready to commission. Our CT simulator is a, a couple of years older. It's a GECT. Uh, it's a very nice uh, piece of equipment. It's dedicated to radiation oncology. And in terms of our medical physics QA equipment, when the Sun Nuclear Corporation salesman comes to visit, he goes, I don't have anything else left to sell you. That's not quite true, but we, we have adopted pretty broadly the, the, the Sun uh, environment uh, across the board. We do have a few other items, uh, 1D tank and uh, standard imaging electrometers and a variety of chambers, uh, the various phantoms that come with the true beam. But this is pretty much our, our physics uh, capability. So what was our dream as we started to stand things up? We, we realized Todd and I have worked together for many, many years. And if I had a dollar for every Excel spreadsheet that I've written, I'd be retired someplace. But that's not the case. Um, we realize that Excel and Word documents have real limitations, and we needed something that was a little bit more robust and reliable. We also wanted to be able to piecemeal perform and document the required QA during clinical hours as opportunity arises, but not lose track of what we've done. And we certainly wanted to be able to demonstrate that we were meeting AAPM Task Group 142 requirements. Obviously, we've, we've been a long-time user of uh, daily QA3, IC profiler, and we really wanted a system that would allow us to get the data from those devices into our QA database with minimum, you know, plus. Overall, we just wanted to ensure consistency and reduce the variability in the QA program. You know, it's real important, especially when multiple people are sharing responsibilities, that you do basically the same thing every time and you can repeat. Clearly, we also wanted to centralize our QA records and our schedule so we could have some visibility to what we had done and what we still needed to do. And in the regulatory world, uh, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. We wanted date and time stamps and electronic signatures to be part and parcel of our QA system. So we adopted SunCheck and if you're not familiar with the system, it relies on a centralized server, but you access it via a web browser. It has a very nicely organized dashboard to let you see what's happened, what's passed, what's failed. It provides automatic data transfer from the QA3 and the IC profiler. Really importantly, it provides automatic data transfer and image analysis of the various imaging phantoms. It comes with a lot of templates pre-built although it allows customization, which everyone likes to put their, you know, their touch on things. Uh, APM Task Group 51 templates are pre-built. And you know, so there's a variety of templated reports as well as custom reports. So it, it's a very flexible system in that regard. Uh, many of the other facilities in our region are, have or are purchasing SunCheck. And we, we all seem to be converging on that as being the, the method by which we will do our QA. Um, our experience with SNC machine, you know, we'll talk a little bit about what the basic environment is, what the prerequisites are, and what templates look like. You know, as I mentioned, it runs on a server. Uh, this is a little bit out of date. I think they're actually version 3.2. Um, 
we did buy a what they call an enterprise single server, which was good for up to 120 patients a day. There, there are kind of the, the the detailed specs as to what's what's in this server. We also uh, decided to purchase the Sun Deploys professional services to install the system, as well as to create the, uh, the, the beam models. And in our opinion, to take full advantage of SNC machine, you will want a daily QA3, the IC profiler and quad wedge kit. Probably want the profiler solid water kit, the various QA phantoms uh, to, to fully exploit this system. In terms of templates, as I said, many of them are, are pre-built. Um, they cover the whole range of tasks that are required by TG142, daily, monthly, annual, and a lot of imaging, MLC, and VMAT specific QA. It's easy to edit and tailor these to meet your specific preferences. It's easy to define tolerances. And anyone that was ever in the military it's got the famous stoplight schema to make it obvious whether it's bad, okay, or great. Uh, so that's easy to look at. One nice thing, especially if you're sharing responsibility for forming this, you can put instructions as part of the, uh, the dashboard, if you will, to help get the things set up right. You can add pictures. You know, it just makes the whole overall uh, deployment more consistent and more usable. Our daily QA program, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's kind of typical, uh, probably what most people are doing. We have, have built this template out and kind of tested it for the last year and a half. Um, we run it in QA mode. Currently, the physicists are coming in and doing morning QA. We were sh very short on therapists for a while, and we just got into the routine of coming in. It takes us about 30 minutes to complete and document. Um, if you want to look at the imaging off isocenter tests offline in an offline review, it's easy enough to do. We print a, a daily uh, custom template report and merge those PDFs into our monthly uh, document. So what what we do as a standard, we do the the MPC for 6MB standard enhanced MLC. We do the various safety and uh, geometry checks that I've indicated. And then we run daily QA3 to look at all these parameters. We move on to doing isocenter verification with the variant geometric phantom with known displacements. And then for us, since we have this sixth off couch, we, we wrestled with how we were going to do that. We used the Quasar Pentaguide phantom and a tilt plate. And just line up and image that do automatic matching, make sure everything is predicted as it should be. We repeat the comb beam CT and verify that the shifts are within the limits and verify the lasers are back on mark. So again, it's all about, a, all things considered, it takes about a half an hour to get the daily QA done the way we're doing it. On a weekly basis, we, we do run picket fence for Static, static picket fence as well as rapid arc picket fence. This is almost mindless in the sense that we've got the, the, the test patient set up, we run these plans, the data is automatically sent to SunCheck, it's analyzed, and we get a nice templated report out uh, showing the results. So it's, it's very easy. Our monthly QA program, we have a treatment plan that we deliver in QA mode. And it allows us to cover all the main points of task group 142. Um, it automatically sends the data and analyzes. We, again, get a nice templated report that we can print out. The key of all the, the monthly QA is our IC profiler. And if you don't have one, you probably want one. It just does an awful lot. Um, we have the quad wedge and, and use that to our advantage. It really speeds the monthly along. And what I really like is the fact that our co-beam CT and imaging analysis, once that's all set up and baselined, you acquire these images, they're automatically sent and analyzed, and they're analyzed very consistently. Anyone that has gone through the pain of putting uh, regions of interest on a phantom, and it, it takes a long time. This is almost effortless, and it's very consistent. 
The same is true for the KV and MV Phantoms that we use. We makes makes our life very easy. So TG51, that's uh, the fundamental thing that we physicists uh, live and breathe for, is to make sure we get that right. Uh, we, you know, implemented TG51 in Sun, but we checked it against our tried and true spreadsheets, which we've been using for years and years and years to make sure everything really calculated the way we expected it to. Um, we have not used the IC profiler yet as a constancy check for absolute dose. We're still doing ion chamber in water or water equivalent phantom on a monthly basis. Um, in this first year, we didn't recalibrate the IC profiler in daily QA3 when we adjusted output based on the ion chamber, but that's certainly something we could look at. And if we look at some of the data we collected over the, f the first year, I'm, I'm showing the daily QA3 results along with the IC profiler in the uh, orange square, our TG51 absolute output calibrations, as well as throwing in our couple of IROC Houston OSLD measurements just to kind of see how things trend along. And then comparing the IC profiler to our ion chamber in solid water, you, you see basically how that was tracking along. We weren't taking great care to use the IC profiler for absolute dose. Overall, in our use of the system, we thought the templates gave us a really uh, good starting point to get the program rolling. They're, they're, like I said, they're easy to, to set up and tailor to what you want to do. Um, we did have, you know, when uh, Varian commissioned our machine, uh, they made IC profiler measurements and made that available to us. We made our baselines shortly after that. Um, that's useful. I think if, as we move forward, we're going to take a look at, you know, really paying attention to doing a temperature pressure calibration, array calibrations, and dose calibrations of the IC profiler uh, so that we can look at output constancy checks and try to tighten up the, the, uh, the measurements. I think Sun is, is recommending that buildup be used when you're doing the array calibrations and the dose calibrations to match the conditions under which you're measuring. And we recently got the hard, uh, the solid water kit for the IC profiler and plan to do that as part of our upcoming annual. So that is how we're using uh, SNC or SunCheck for our QA program. The, the next part is our looking at how we're you know, looking at patients you know, prior to treatment and during treatment and why that's exciting. And I realized that a few years back when AAPM was in Austin, I heard some talks about uh, transit dosimetry in Europe. And it, it must have tickled my, you know, something in my head that said, boy, that's pretty neat. I'd really like to do that. And I think that's probably why I got excited about perfraction, was the idea that that was potentially possible in our world. Um, basically, when we started looking at our program, the pre-treatment QA, we had been questioned by, ACR surveyor about you know using uh, just map check for our, our our QA so it seemed to us using a higher resolution detector I mean MB imager uh, would be sensible and we wanted to consider having something that the therapist in their schedule could run the portal dosimetry or the transit dosimetry for us and make the measurement at their convenience and still allow us to look at it and we were interested in, you know, not having to learn a new uh, methodology or analysis techniques. And we had a lot of prior experience with MapCheck 2 and we're used to how it presented the data. And so that, that made uh, SNC patient attractive to us. And like I said, the idea that during treatment, we could actually assess the accuracy of treatment delivery and potentially detect errors at the initiation of treatment, as well as obtain some information about what was happening to the patient as treatment progressed was very appealing to us. I apologize, I don't have the what exact journal this came out of, but when I was doing my literature search, 
like I said, there was a lot of papers several years ago out of Europe where they were a little bit ahead of us. And uh, this this paper laid out kind of a you know a review of the state of the art at the time. But what was really interesting to me was the the findings that by doing in vivo transit dosimetry, you had a much higher potential for detecting errors than you did just from uh, you know pretreatment QA or chart checks and reviews. And that's a pretty compelling uh, statement that you could detect almost three quarters of the incidents why pretreatment epid dosimetry could only you know hit five or six percent. So that that seems like a low hanging fruit to me. So SNC patient, if you haven't looked at it really hard, it really is a, a start to finish a QA of your of your plan. Uh, they they offer a, a module called Plan Check, which looks at deliverability uh, and constancy of parameters in your treatment plan. It allows a secondary check of dose and monitor units. You can do your traditional pretreatment IMRT VMAT QA and also the in vivo dosimetry monitoring. And there's a lot of options for the analysis that you can get out of. This is a pretty busy screen, but there's a lot of data available to you uh, to cogitate about and decide what's going on. Um, this was a paper I found that someone actually took a very hard look. Uh, I think it's Arthur Olk and Zhang. Um, this is a great paper to look at if you want to see a very systematic what is possible with uh, transit dosimetry. And they did a sensitivity analysis for for detecting uh, various tested items. They introduced errors, and they kind of came up with their overall sensitivity analysis of what was possible. And that's that's a it's a very well written paper. It's got a lot of detail. I would encourage you to to take a look at that to, to satisfy yourself that there's something about this transit dosimetry that's worthwhile. There also, when you dig around, um, there's an AAPM task group uh, committee out there where uh, they are working towards helping us understand uh, how to use efforts for patient-specific IMRT. Um, I can't find any evidence of any drafts being published yet, but we can be hopeful it's coming. And in terms of Sun has put together a really nice fax about patient-specific quality assurance, and it answers a lot of the very detailed technical questions about how this all magically works to give all this wonderful data. I'd encourage you to look at that. So in terms of what we have found, um, the plan priority checks do help us look at the, basic of the basics of the plan, make sure that we're being consistent. Uh, the independent dose calculations are, are part and parcel of the process, and they're, they're very, very good. We, we do like using the MB panel for pretreatment QA. It's an it's, it's easy process to implement and get set up. We haven't had to uh, ask the therapist to do this for us yet. There's still, uh, we're, physicists are still going out the machine and running the, the plan, but it would be a simple matter for a therapist to pull out the plan, treat in QA mode, and the data would be on its way. And we like the ability to perform in vivo uh, transit dosimetry uh, for any and all fractions. So plan check, it, it gives you some assessment of your, your DVH, how your organs at risk and your targets are doing. Uh, looks at plan parameter checks, structure checks, and deliverability. Uh, a couple of things that we found in, in our early use of this, we really started going with this in March, April of this year. We, we found we had a plan that had two isocenters. It was intended, but it readily flagged that there was a problem with the, with the fields having different isocenters. We did find something real with uh, density for bolus, and we, we found out that we had made a, a fat finger error in entering the electron density curve, and we, we caught that and corrected that. And so there's a lot of potential here uh, to pull out uh, 
these details and make them, you know, actionable by the physicists during the initial chart check. I think it's very helpful. Um, here's a sample of a plan check report for one of our patients. And you can see the sorts of things that it's looking at. I think we basically have selected most everything that's available. Um, but it just it, it helps us get a, a quick look at the some of some of the factors related to the plan. The dose check um, that fulfills our need for a second check. Um, you export the plan from Eclipse. Um, you have to do a little bit of uh, updating in dose check as to what you're going to do. Uh, make sure the prescription treatment site are set. You can use QA templates that are predefined, or you can use custom templates to your liking. There's universal and custom metrics, and you make decisions about what PTVs and OARs to include in your report. And then again, you have the ability to generate a, a nice report and include or exclude what your uh, choose. And here's a, a sample of the dose check report for the same patient. And it lays out very nicely and neatly kind of the, the key parameters. So pre-treatment QA, this is this has replaced our use of map check. It's phantomless. It's suitable for 3D, IMRT, VMAT, SRS, SBRT. Uh, it provides planar, 2D planar analysis, 3D dose and patient anatomy, uh, 3D and structure gammas, and you, you have lots of choices as to what you're going to present. Um, the exciting thing to me is our uh, so-called fraction in. So fraction zero occurs uh, prior to the patient being there, everything's out, it's through air onto the panel. The in vivo fraction in is during treatment delivery, so the patient is in the field. It is a fully automated process. It collects an integrated image during the treatment on the panel. Again, it's compatible with all of these treatment modalities. And it reconstructs the 3D dose on today's cone beam CT. Allows you to, to look at the, your DVH and dose protocol comparisons and compares the result to your TPS. Um, here's a, just some screenshots. And, you know, to emphasize it, it uses the density from the comb beam CT for accurate daily in vivo. It recalculates the dose using that comb beam CT uh, if it's available. It verifies dose deliveries in line with the doctor's intent. and has the potential for automated alerts and failures if you're able to set set it up on your network. Um, so the question is, is what what do you have to do to implement that? And so it's it's really a pretty straightforward process. There's some some work involved, but it's not horrible. Uh, there's some basic information about your linear accelerator energies and jaw sizes and those sorts of things. Um, Sun provides uh, treatment plans that you run and calculate for each of the energies to create the model. Um, you get a very comprehensive report showing how their B model compared to your treatment planning system model gives you some confidence that there's there's good agreement. And then it's, there's a process to perform a calibration of the MV panel using a Sun supply protocol and plan. You do need uh, solid water, uh, 0, 10, and 30 centimeters. And as part of our process, we ran an end-to-end -end test uh, using the IROC Houston head and neck phantom, kind of validate everything. So fraction in is kind of a, a, a novel uh, technology in, in, in our world. And we debated a lot about what we would do and, you know, Right or wrong, we decided that we would run it for every fraction, which I gather is a little bit unusual, but perhaps it's excessive, but we had the time and wherewithal to do that to see what we would learn. And so the physicists kind of look at the daily results and uh, anything that changes uh, requires us to take a kind of a deeper look at the, the, the daily imaging, just see what's going on. So. What, what have we seen uh, 
through fraction N. Well, we certainly have seen changes in lung cancer patients based on tumor response. Um, shockingly, uh, sometimes in less than a week, but more typically two to three weeks into treatment, uh, lung is opening up, tumor is perhaps changing position, changing size, and it's kind of actionable. Our, our radiation oncologist uh, was a little skeptical at first, but uh, I think he has gotten kind of intrigued by the fact that uh, we, we are detecting meaningful changes and it helps him decide if he wants to replan a patient. Um, we haven't settled on any hard and fast rules um, as to what we're going to use. That's evolving. I found some literature on that, but I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So here, here's a typical uh, lung patient that's you know just kind of chugging along. The, the check marks across the, the, the top of the screen are, are the plan check and the dose check and the fraction zero and then the, the daily treatments. And we initially were using pretty tight criteria of three and three, and uh, but we were still getting really nice results. That feels good. Um, this is that first lung patient and some of the, the display that shows, it shows your plan and calculated doses as well as gamma analysis, which is a little bit hard to see, but on, the, on a real screen, it's a little bit easier. And, you know, as we go along, you, you get a DVH analysis of what was uh, planned versus what was achieved on that fraction. And then you have a lung patient like lung patient number two, and you know, here's some results on first fraction. PTV coverage looks great. Organs at risk all look great. But we got to fraction 22, and all of a sudden, where our PTV coverage is not quite within spec. We've, we've dropped down to an 87% gamma. Our spinal cord is not doing as well. So that prompted some, some looking. Um, this is a shot, a screenshot of the gamma analysis, and you can see, oh, well, we're actually, our, our hot spot area is right in the tumor, so radiation oncology was, was not unhappy about that in this case, but it does give a basis for having a conversation about what's happening with the patient and perhaps what more needs to be done. So the big question, I think, in, in April when I gave this talk initially was, well, what should we use? Uh, three percent, three millimeters seem well, seem okay. We were getting reasonable results. Well, the Europeans have have been at this a bit longer than us, and uh, this paper uh, provides some recommendations. And it it varies a bit from the three and three. It's a little bit more relaxed, but this this seems rational. Again, this is a this is an excellent paper that uh, outlines a very you know, methodical approach to uh, what makes sense. And I, I'd feel pretty comfortable with, with using this as, as the basis for setting thresholds for analysis. And then finally, to kind of conclude about our overall program, we, we found SNC machine very helpful in our QA program. Um, in terms of organizing work and archiving records, we had our ACR accreditation survey in, in June, and I think we kind of overwhelmed the surveyor. Every time he wanted to see something, it was very easy to present. It was obviously very comprehensive, electronic uh, dates and signatures. I, you know, I, I just can't imagine a better system for proving that you did what you said you were going to do. Um, dose check and fraction zero. Uh, is a very straightforward process. Both seem to work extremely well for us. Um, plan check, I, th I think that's going to continue to evolve and as they incorporate uh, more checks, uh, that'll just be more valuable to us. And I, I have to say fraction in is kind of a remarkable capability. Um, when I started in this business, we were excited about putting TLDs on patients and then we got diodes and we thought that was pretty exciting. but now we're we're really looking at the total dose distribution on every fraction, or we have the potential to. My conclusion is, you know, looking at 
the first fraction, or as the, the one paper presented, the, they look at the first three fractions. I think that the potential to catch fundamental errors in patient setup uh, is, is invaluable. And I, th I think that as we move forward, the fraction in evaluations and as we settle down on some reasonable criteria and learn to use that better, I think that will just improve our uh, ability to respond to changes in, in, in tumor volumes and body habitus and, and those sorts of things. And so I welcome any emails or questions. There's my basic contact information. Um, feel free to reach out. It's, uh, I, I would thank the Sun folks for all the help they provided to our facility in getting our system up and running as, as well as it is. It's definitely been a benefit to us. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Bill. Really appreciate the, the presentation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we'll leave your, your contact information up uh, for another minute or two if someone wants to, to write that down and contact you directly. Um, there were a couple of questions that came in, both on the, the machine and on the patient side. Um, mm -hmm. On the, the machine side, there was a question about additional phantoms that Sun Nuclear and SunCheck may uh, have automatic analysis for. Um, there is a listing of those on our website under the SunCheck specifications. But the question for you, Bill, is are you using anything on, on a CT uh, phantom or anything like that that you're, you're using with SunCheck right now? Well, yeah, I mean, so the, the cat fan that, that Varian provides, we, we analyze that. And we, we also, with our GE CT scanner, we're using the, the GE uh, standard phantom on our, you know, I should have showed the daily CTQA, but we're automatically analyzing the GE Phantom and producing a, a daily report with the, the, the key parameters. Wonderful. Um, there's also a question here about, uh, on, the, on the patient side, um, you know, when we're looking at uh, the idea of, of fraction and when you have a larger patient for any, any tissue that might be outside the image field of view, is that something you've encountered to this point? Uh, we, we have we have not. Um, I don't I don't have a good answer as to how how the system would respond handle that. Yeah, we. Uh, I don't know if Jennifer Hamilton is still on the line, but she's one of our clinical physicists, and right. she might be able to chime in on that too. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is this the CBCT question or the fraction in uh, uh, the large... fraction in one large yeah. patient? Yeah. So um, essentially, what the software does is it looks to see if the patient's um, CBCT um, intersects or or comes in contact with the edge of the cone beam CT. If it does, we assume there's missing tissue, and we add back in that tissue um, so that we can get an accurate calculation. If it's weight loss, on the other hand, or weight gain, um, the patient's edge usually won't contact the edge of the CBCT, so we leave that as it is. We don't want to add back in or delete that um, that weight loss or weight gain uh, because that's a real error. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay. Another question, Bill, uh, just on the patient side, was a little bit more about workflow. Um, it's maybe a two-part question. One is kind of how you interact with your radiation oncologists and, uh, you know, as you get those results using the, the dose being calculated in the daily CBCT, uh, you know, how, how long does it take to get that information into SunCheck and automatically analyze before you can have a conversation about it? Oh, I mean, it's, it's literally, it's probably no more than a half hour Post treatment, that the the result, the data is available, or the results are available. I mean, we tend to we tend to look at those each day as they come in. I mean, it's it, again, it's on a dashboard, so anything that's uh, deviating from your your tolerances is highlighted very easily. We don't have a. I, I think that there's a way to set this up that it could send a it could send an email alert. We don't have that set up in our system, but we're a small department and and uh, we talk to the doctor an awful lot here. So um, when Todd in particular, when he's looking at that, you know, he, he brings it up in our, our morning huddle. Hey, I've noticed this patient is 
doing this. And, you know, we just have an, an informal discussion. But I think there's much more formalized ways of doing that. But the data is available uh, pretty quickly post-treatment. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, just an additional question about uh, how you're doing some of your calculations and how they're set up for the, the in vivo piece. Um, the question was, are you using both the EPID and your log files for your calculation? Uh, yes. Vivo? Yes. And you, you have the choice if, the, if you can do just log files, but uh, we, we collect an EPID image uh, every fraction. So we, de we decided that gave us better, better information overall. So, and it didn't cost, cost us anything to do that. Um, the actual choice your clinic may make may vary, I suppose. Wonderful. Well, uh, looks like those are the, the questions that we've had come in so far. Um, so I want to say thank you for your, your, your time, Bill. Um, I do want to let everyone know that we do have a listing of all of our webinars on demand at www.sunnuclear.com backslash webinars. You can search by product or uh, date or by author or present, presenter as well. Um, so that is a good spot to, to find those recorded webinars, and this one will be posted there as well. So again, Bill, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody.